Hi folks, so in this problem here we have an orthographic uh, drawing uh, whereby we have to complete the elevation in the direction of arrow A and the elevation in the direction of arrow B and project an, uh, a plan view from A above, essentially play, project a plan view from what I often say is arrow C. So it says here, draw an elevation, look in the direction of arrow A, in view and in the plan. So looking at in the direction of arrow A, we can work out our overall length, which is 130 millimeters and our overall height, which is 105. So length 130, height 105. And then in the direction of arrow B, our width is 90. So I put the width in there of 90. And once again, you create a box that is 90 by 105. And our plan view, we're concerned with widths and lengths. So our length 130 and width is 90. Just zoom in on that there a little bit there now. Okay. So you can see here in this problem, okay, uh, we kind of have various curves, okay, and sloping surfaces. So in the direction of arrow A, haven't used color in this. I'll refer to a model in a second where, I, where I've used color. I can see these kind of round faces here, this one in here, I suppose the camera lens. I'll see all this surface. I'll see this surface here. But what I want to note is a couple of little lines. This line right here, this curve, okay, in my elevation view, okay, that's going to appear elliptical, okay. But in my plan view, from the bird's eye view looking down on top of it, I'm actually going to see that as a perfect semicircle. You can see the semicircle down here, which is saying it has a radius of 20, okay? So I'm probably not going to be able to complete that straight away in the elevation. I'll have to work somewhere else on that, maybe in the plan and end elevation, okay? Um, I'll also see then, I suppose, if we refer here to view B, um, I will see all this space here. There's a sloping surface here, so I'll see that in both view B and view C. I'll see this circular face here, okay? Which I'll actually see is a rectangle. It has a radius of 30. So I'm actually going to see a rectangle that is 60 high. And you can see here it's coming out 30 from the actual face of the, the camera itself. This bit here has a radius of 20. So I'm going to see a rectangle there with a height of 40 from here down to here. And once again, it's coming out 20. And you can see here there's a little step in there. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it for hidden detail. I'll also see this face here. And then in the bird's eye view, I'm going to see all of that. This surface here, this surface, this surface. Once again, I'm going to see rectangles for my circular surfaces, okay, the lens part. And here is where we're going to see the perfect semicircle, okay? So I'm just going to refer to the model there now. So looking at the model here, if I go to the front view, as I was saying, I'm going to see the, those circles. This one is a radius of 10, radius 20, radius 30, okay? Concentric circles, they're all sharing the same center point, okay? So it's important we get the correct center there. This is the curve here that I was saying is elliptical, that curve there, okay? Um, if I refer then to the plan view, just to show you, you can see here I'm seeing it as a perfect semicircle, okay, with that sloping face there, okay? Seeing all these surfaces here, this one here is a slanted surface, and once again, remember as I said, there is our rectangle and another rectangle with a hole on the inside. And then finally, on the end elevation over here, there is that sloping surface, okay? Just quickly refer... The reason I kind of have this face here, okay, I'll select it again, slightly different red there is because this red face here, right here, this one, okay, I can actually see that in this view as well. You can see it there just a little bit, but I didn't pull it in yellow because uh, it was only seen a small bit. So there's all the faces we can see there. This line here might give us a little bit of a challenge. We mightn't be able to determine that until we find it in another view. So we're going to start that there now, and we're going to put in as much of the elevation as we can. The only line we probably won't be able to put in is this elliptical curve here. Okay, so we'll get that started. And just refer back to my drawing there. There we go. Okay, so zoom out there. And just make it big enough so we can see it in the screen. There we go. So there is the elevation box set up, the plan box, and then the end elevation over here. Arrow A is pointing to the right, so my elevation went on the right hand side of my XY line. Uh, end elevation on the left, plan underneath the elevation. So starting off, I'm going to put in my various lengths, okay, and heights. So I've got heights here on the right hand side of 40, 25, 20, and 20, okay. So 40, 25, 20, and 20, and then the lengths here. So I've got a length here at the top, 10, 20, 40, 40, and 20. And I've actually got other lengths as well, which are important to note. Um, what will actually be important to note here, I'll refer to it in a second, will be the center point. Okay, so I'll start with some of those there now. So at the very, very top, I'm going to start putting in some of my lengths there. So I've got 10, then 20 will be 30, and then I have another 40 after that, so it'll bring me to 70, which 
to do 40 and another 40 sorry yeah which, which is 20 left over so there's all my lengths at the top I'm going to put in my various heights now as well so the overall height is 105 which I have in there I'm going to put in 40 and then it is 25 there's the 40 and the 25 will bring to 65 and then 20 and 20 so 65 plus 20 will be 85 with 20 left over so there's my various heights you can see the little marks i put in there and now the next thing i'm just going to very quickly refer to is you can see here we've also got a length here okay which is 10 there 20 and if you actually just use symmetry it's going to be another 10 here but if you come down here we can see it's a radius of 20 so at the bottom here i'm actually just going to mark 40 as well okay because i'm going to be using that somewhere else uh, for a semicircle in the plan i'm going to mark the 20 as well so 20 and 40 okay you could have marked it down below in the plan now the next thing i'm going to note is i want to find okay before i start drawing i want to locate i suppose this center point right here okay and if we just look here that center point has a certain height if you follow the lines out you can see the line is here and it refers back to here, which is at the same height. So that center point is actually, look, it's at up a height of 40 millimeters, okay? And if we actually look at our length here at the bottom, the center of it then is over 85 from the left or in 45 from the right, okay? So I'm going to mark in maybe 45 from the right and up 40, which I've previously done. So from the right-hand side, I'm going to come in 45. So 45 back to zero. and determine from that point there and up the 40 that I previously measured that's just going to help me determine my center point and right there is going to be my center point so what I'm going to start doing now is putting in some various lengths so this one will go up and down <clears throat> this guy is going to go across the whole way and then I put in this little section here and just referring over so from the center actually it's very important I should have noted if you follow the center up for the semicircle or for the circle see this kind of point here follow it up it comes in it goes up it goes in it goes up so directly above the center okay which is really helpful to us is that point right there which is connecting down here okay so i'm actually going to bring the center up as well and i'm going to connect that over to here like that okay and then the semicircle or sorry this little rectangular bit at the top i'll put that in as well okay so i'm actually going to heavy in a good bit of that now <clears throat> so start off with all my vertical lines And from the elevation, we can actually figure that out now, which is really helpful to us. This little box section. That's just going to go heavy to there. Heavy to here. There and there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put in the slanted line here. And what's really helpful to us there is we've now found that point right there which is going to help us later on finding that edge there okay and I'm going to put in get this line here now really quickly and the last bit i'm going to do then is i'm going to put in my <clears throat> circles so i've got a radius of 20 a radius of 30 a radius of 20 and a radius of 10 so i'm going to mark those out from the center point so 10 20 and 30. The one we might struggle with here is the 10, so I'll leave that till the end. I actually have a circle template that'll be helpful. So, do my best not to slip. So, there's the radius 30. Radius 20. Let's see here, can we get the 10 one done? It's a little bit more awkward. As best I can. I do without slipping. 
there we go now there's the circles very quickly I'm going to heavy those in using my marker which will be a little bit more of a challenge so just want to make sure they're accurate first so here we go So there's the 30. Down to the 20. And we'll see if we can manage with the 10. Might be a little bit trickier. Take my time. Yeah, there you go. Happy with that. It's the best I could do. Okay. So there is the elevation almost fully completed, just missing this elliptical portion of the curve. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to move on to our plan view next. I'm going to leave the end elevation till the end. Um, so for the plan view, I'm going to transfer down any lengths that I have. So the length here, bring this guy down. Okay, I'm going to bring down oh, this length as well. Yeah, down to about there. And there, bring down my center point. It's going to be helpful. It's going to come all the way to the front, and you want to bring down this section right here. That little bit there. Now, for my plan view, just looking in here on top of this for the box, I'm going to put in various widths. Okay, so on the right hand side of the box, okay, if I'm looking down, if you imagine there's a box on top of it. I'm going to put come down 40 and then obviously 50 left over. But after that 40, I've actually gotten to step out 30 and 20 because that's going to help me determine these sections here. Okay, so 40, 30 and 20. And then I'm obviously going to put in the semicircle here for this section as well. Okay, I think I have 10. You can see here at the back, I have a 10 and I have a 30 as well. So starting on the right hand side, I'm going to mark down, zoom out there a little bit so we can get it fully in the drawing. There we go. So from here, I'm going to mark down 40, and I've obviously 50 left over, but after that 40, I'm going to mark down 30 as well, with 20 left over. So I went 40, then 30, and then the next bit here, I'm going to mark inside in here 10 as well, for that little bit there. Okay, and I'll put some of that in there now. So that's that little set box at the top. The 40 is going to go the whole way across. And then the 30, just want to bring it across here like that. Okay. And any lengths that I have, the outside section of my circles, I'm going to bring those down. This one and this one. And then the outside section of this one and this one. I leave the inside circle till the end. Okay. So I'm actually going to start having in a bit of information there now. So looking down on top of it, I've got this little rectangle here. Then I've got this surface here, and I'm going to have that surface there. We don't know exactly where that is going to be just yet, because we don't know the width of this section here. It's going to actually be determined by this angle here of 60 degrees. So I'll have to leave that little bit. So I'm going to heavy in this whole section here at the back. I can heavy in this edge here. I'll actually heavy in that rectangle first. So that rectangle is from here to here. So there's the rectangle. Just came out at a distance of 10. Down there. Now this line here, it's going to heavy in this little bit. All the way across. And then this section right there. Put it there, and I've got a line here that I'm going to heavy in. Now I'm going to get the outside of the lens. Okay. Because when I look down on top of those cylinders, I'm actually going to see a rectangle. Now. I'm also going to bring down, remember the center point I said, so half of 40 was 20, just bring this down. It's going to be helpful to me. 
and from here I'm going to do a perfect semicircle, semicircle looking down on top of it. Okay, start with the borrow. So from here up to here. Yeah, my accuracy is pretty good. And there is the perfect semicircle. So really, really quickly. Once again, heavy that in using the marker. Do this as accurately as I can. And there we have that little section there. Okay, so as you can see, what I've actually done here is I've heavied in this bit here and this bit, which is here and here. Okay. And I've uh, heavied in the semicircle looking down top of it. I haven't done this section there because it's going to be going up a little bit like that before I can heavy in that the whole way. Okay. Actually, sorry, I can just realize I can probably heavy in that. The only bit I'm missing is a little line there, which is going to be that line. Okay. So there is the plan view uh, completed. Okay. In as much as I can. So what I want to do now is I'm going to move on to the end elevation. So for the end elevation, I'm going to transfer all over my various widths and my various heights. So any heights that I have, let's bring them across. So here's the height. That'll come across there. I've got a height here. Come across, I'm going to bring it over that much. And I'm going to leave the circular bit just for a second. Any widths that I have. So here's the 40. Bring over the 10 as well. So bring the 40 and the 10 up. I'm going to start heading in just as much as I can on that there now. So if we quickly refer to the page, I can see this face here. Okay, and I'm going to see that face there where this line is here, which is going to be helpful to me. So I have that found previously, which is right here. So I'll bring that across as well. So this point right here. So I'm going to start heading in a bit of information there now. So that rectangle at the front, which was only this wide. Here's the 40 void, so come across here. And I think I can go heavy up as far as here. And this guy is actually going to go heavy the whole way up to there. And heavy line here. Here's where that face is. Now, what's important here is this line here, it's going to come to here. I see that face there. And fully. That little section there. And there we go. There's that little bit. Okay. So looking in the direction of arrow B, I can see that rectangle. I can see this slanted surface with this edge here put in. And I can also see this right here. I've got all of that in. So now the next little bit I'm going to focus on is these kind of, uh, sorry, the cylinders, okay? So like we had down here, okay, I'm going to see those exact two cylinders again only coming out of it in this direction, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer over the bottom of the cylinder, the top of the cylinder, and then come to the next one inside it. This is going to go all the way to the end. And now I have to bring the width of that across. So this bit here that was 30, transfer this across, and then come up. That'll help us determine our cylinder. Get the horizontal lines in then. Okay, once again, I'm going to leave the inside part until the very, very end. And now the last little bit that we are going to see then is this section here that comes out at an angle of 60 degrees. We'll work on that. But before we see it, this radius of 20 comes out. Okay, so it's going to be stepping out when I look in the direction of arrow B. It's going to be coming out 20. So it's like I'm looking in from this direction. So that distance there is coming out. Look, 20 here. So where that 20 comes out, I'm going to bring that across. 
And once again, where that comes across, I'm going to transfer it up. It's going to go up there like that. And what's most important to me then is, so somewhere up along here, that edge is going to go up. But it obviously doesn't go up the full way, it stops here. So if we follow here, this point right here, we can actually see, if I just zoom in on that, there's an angle here from this point of 60 degrees. And that is going to help us determine that slope right there. So that's a little bit tricky. But if I find that point, which is right here, it's going to be going at 60 degrees. Okay, so zoom out there. Right, happy with that. So that point was right there. So I get my 60 degree set square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that sloping line there. Okay. And once again, heavy in the part that's relevant, heavy in this little section here. Okay. We know in reality it comes down right to here. Obviously comes out here, 20 at the bottom. And then this section up here, heavy in that. Okay. And that is the end elevation completed, the elevation almost completed, and the plan view completed. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to get in this elliptical curve here. Okay. Before we start looking at any hidden detail at the end of the drawing. So to get the elliptical curve in my elevation, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do point location on the curve. So we've done this previously. In the view where I see that as a perfect semicircle, which is the plan, I'm going to split this perfect semicircle into 30, 60 degrees. So from the center point, there we go. I'm going to go 60 degrees down, 60 degrees this way. 30 degrees down to the left, 30 degrees to the right, and finally straight down. Okay, so there's a the point there. I'm going to label them. I'm going to call this one number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, and finally number seven. Now, all of those points in my end elevation, I'm actually going to see them on this face right here. That's a sloping face there, okay? Remember, it's behind this uh, behind this kind of a cylinder part here, so that face continues down as far as here. So I want to find those. So to be able to find those, I'm going to transfer every one of them across. One and seven is already across, so there's one and seven going to be in this position. Two and six are going to come across. Likewise with three and five. Okay. When they come across, I'm going to bring them up. Three and five, two and six. And obviously four. So this point right here is going to be two and six. And then the next one down is going to be three and five. And then we have four right here on the edge. Okay. So let's locate them. Well, 1 and 7 is easy enough. There's 1. There's 7. Okay, by just using simple mapping methods. 1 and 7. Now I want to find 2 and 6. So 2 and 6 in elevation have to be directly above. So I'm going to come up here. So we're going to be up somewhere along those lines. And wherever they are over here, bring them across. And that's going to be 2 and six. Now I want to find three and five. It's going to be in here somewhere. And bring them across. So there's three and five. And finally, not lastly, and lastly I should say, sorry, number four. Bring that up a little bit further. And there's number four. Okay, so I'm going to quickly sketch in that curve. And 
uh, no as best I can. Let's look at a little bit there. There you have the curved surface. Okay, that is actually the drawing completed. Uh, except the last thing you would always check for now at the end of a question is any hidden detail, okay? And I do think we're going to have some hidden detail on our plan view and our end elevation view here, not the elevation, okay? So I'm just going to show you where that hidden detail is by referring to our model. So if I just go back in here to our model. So um, in the elevation, I'm just going to turn on shaded with hidden edges, okay? So in the elevation, you can see here, there's no kind of hidden detail. But if I refer to my plan view you'll actually see if you remember on the kind of uh, you can see these these kind of lines here okay that is where there's a hole going inside the lens okay so i'm gonna have to put in that hidden detail it goes in 10 millimeters okay and if you remember the radius was 10 as well so a diameter of 20 okay so there's a bit of hidden detail there in the elevation so quickly refer back out to our objects we're gonna have to put in that there so to get that hidden detail in okay I'm going to bring down the width. If you remember, I said I'd bring these down. I said I'd save it till the end. And then I'm going to measure up 10 millimeters, so from one up to two. And that hidden detail will go in there. So really quickly, hidden detail, hash line, I should say a dotted line even. Now, if I've done that in my elevation, I also need to do it in my end elevation. Is that 10 millimeters that I measured up or the width? Bring that across, bring it up. It's going to be up in here somewhere. And then bring this and this, the top and bottom of the circle. Across and across. So there it is. Put that in there. Neat as I possibly can. Okay, so there's the hidden detail uh, for the inside part of the lens. Okay, if we just look in here, it said it was stepping in 10 millimeters right in here. Okay, now the last little bit I'm going to have a bit of hidden detail on is in the end elevation as well. So if I just refer to that there, so from the right hand side here, if you look here, we've got this section in. But if you remember, I said the slope here was hidden behind this cylindrical face here. You can see the cylinder face there, that edge there, and that edge running down there, because they are actually the slope surface here. Okay, so it's important that we don't forget those. And then one tiny little bit here, we have an edge running in here at the back, that little, if I zoom in there, that little line there, here, that line, just try and highlight it there, if I can find it. There. there we go. That little line there, you can see it here as well. Okay, so I'll just get those two lines in there now. So I've already got them, it's just a case of having them in. So this line will go try and make it as neat and tidy as I possibly can. Because this was the slope surface where I had the points. Okay, so there's that one, and then this one. There you have it, folks. That is the question completed. Okay, all hidden. Oh, sorry, I knew I was missing one thing. I got to once I had this point here. Should have brought that down, and I knew I forgot something. Brought that across, and now that is the question completed. So always checking over your drawing. All, you can see that there, how easy it is to just to miss a line, okay, after putting in all that effort, and you could lose a couple of marks just by forgetting one little line here, okay? Uh, really, really simple mistake, okay? Uh, but you can see here, as the, object, as the drawings are getting a lot more complex, I think this drawing is actually a junior cert higher level question from a few years back, um, but as they get a lot more complex, you can miss something quite easily, okay? So that is the question done, guys. I hope you found that helpful.